Hello, hello, and welcome to Digital Marketing This Week. It is episode 36. Today we're going to be talking about, I should say this week, we're going to be talking about how to create a great offer. Of course, this is all brought to you by Seriously Simple Marketing over at SeriouslySimpleMarketing.com. My name is Chris Mercer. I'm about analytics and optimization. I'm the content developer behind just about everything you see at uh, Seriously Simple Marketing and, of course, the host of Digital Marketing This Week. And, yeah, I just go by Mercer. Okay, so this week's focus topic is offers, all about offers. Now, uh, if you have questions on this, we're going to be able to answer those live for those who are joining live. And again, even if you can't join us live, you can ask questions if you're part of the insiders. How do you become part of the insiders? You just got to go to seriouslysimplemarketing.com. It's completely free. You'll see plenty of ways to opt in there, uh, especially if we're doing our job right. So you'll see lots of different ways to opt in. Uh, and that's all you have to do. Again, completely free, just a service that we like to provide. And uh, what you will happen is you'll get every week, you'll get an email that kind of gives you an idea of when the Digital Marketing Week episode will be recorded and links so that you can join us live. And if you can't join us live, that's totally fine. There are links where you can ask questions about the topic or any topic. And then at the end of these, where we kind of cover the content, we kind of go back and jump off the virtual stage, so to speak. And then we go back and answer questions and just have a, a chat with everybody. So definitely encourage you to do that. Your goal is to get one idea, act on that one idea. And as always, repeat the process. Go back, grab another idea, and act on that one idea. And with offers, there's a lot to it. So uh, you want to make sure that you're just focusing on the one idea. This isn't something where you get 14 different things and then you try to do all 14 at the same time. Just pick one, go back and try again. And what are we going to be covering today? Because today we're going to be covering the ideas, give you some ideas on different types of offers, some things you may not have thought about, ways to create those offers, and a basic kind of overview, a quick little formula to know how your offers, uh, basically to know how if you're uh, to know if your offers will work. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. And of course, much, much more. So let's get to it, how to create great offers. First, let's talk about what offers are. There's all sorts of different types of webinars, right? So you can do offers like we do here. This is kind of a webinar style. So that could be an offer. You could do PowerPoint slides or keynote slides, offer your slides as an offer. Uh, you could do eBooks as an offer. You could do PDFs as an offer. Uh, and again, the eBooks, I'm gonna go back to that in a second. This is really what I mean by eBook is, is the Kindle eBooks, right? You could do those as offers. Um, and then PDFs would be just kind of like um, separate downloadable PDFs that may not necessarily read on something like a Kindle or ebook offer. You can do demonstrations as offers, right? So you could say like, hey, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use, let's say you're doing a, an offer for, maybe you're an affiliate for Optimized Press and you wanna do a demonstration of how to use Optimized Press, you could do that. There are other offers, of course. You've got white papers, and that's kind of where you do the case studies or the research on a certain topic that might be part of your industry. You can give out templates. Uh, companies like HubSpot are incredibly good at this. Uh, lots of free tools. You can maybe create a free tool, either a resource list, or maybe if you're a developer, you create the tools yourself. Free trials, of course, if you have a software as a service product, maybe you do a seven-day offer, a 14-day offer, something like that. You can do consultations, you know, your free 15-minute call. Um, you know, I'll give you a 10 minute review of your website, things like that. And of course there's coupons, right? You can offer for coupons and, and discounts and all that fun stuff. So there's lots of different things to think about when you think about what is the offer that I could be giving. Now, once you've got that, your, your question is, okay, is this offer any good, right? So is this something that's going to work? And what you think about here is you think about your, the value that people are giving for the value that they're getting. Okay, and we, we have an image here of, of an hourglass and on the top half it's money and on the bottom half it's the sands of time, right? And that's what they're giving. They're giving money and time, right? At least one of those. So maybe it's not, maybe it's a free offer that you're doing. Uh, they're at least giving their time there. They're, they're giving personal information, right? That's, that's a currency, right? They're giving permission to create a conversation if, if you're having them up, something that they are exchanging. And for the value that they're getting back, you need to ask yourself, just sort of you and the mirror, you look in the mirror and you go, okay, is this something that's really good? Does it offer more value than I'm asking for? And if it does, that that's the first step, right? If it doesn't, just go back and make your offer a little bit better. Now, again, thinking about the value, right? Biggest deal. So that's, that's the number one step if you want to determine if your offer is any good. Does it truly provide more value than what you're getting in return? And if you keep that as a general rule, uh, business continues to grow for you. The next question is, is it focused? Right. So are you focusing on a particular person? And when we talk about this, we don't talk about like, oh, yeah, I want to go after people who are trying to make money online, if that's your niche. Right. Or or uh, I want to go after online marketers. If you're going back to that optimized press example, maybe you're an affiliate for optimized press and you want to have, you know, the target of online marketer because that's who's going to do that. Well, that's not that's not really true. Right. It's it's the online marketer who uses WordPress. But can you get more specific? How targeted can you get that? Can this be the online marketer who uses WordPress and has never used a drag and drop theme before? 
right? Because they're just doing their own. Could it be the online marketer who's using WordPress and uses Optimized Press 1.0 and has never upgraded, right? That could be the target. And the content that you're creating, right, this offer that you're creating is very specific to that particular issue or that particular person. And if it is, then it solves their problem. It gives them immense value for what they're getting back. Now, granted, that means it's a much smaller niche, but you just create a lot of different offers that have subtle little tweaks where each one of those offers targets that specific audience. And then all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of people that are knowing all about you. The final thing you wanna think about is testing. Okay, so there, there is no way to know if it's absolutely going to work. You can have probabilities, right? The probability it will work is that, yes, it's targeted to a certain type of person. Yes, it's something that is uh, offers more value than what I'm getting in return, right? And, and again, how you really know that, like you start, you're guessing in the beginning, you're absolutely guessing. But then you try it once you passes that sort of initial couple of tests, you put it out to the market, you see what the market says. The market's opinion is what matters. Your opinion does not matter. Right? Your friend's opinion doesn't matter. Your spouse's opinion doesn't matter. No one's opinion matters except for the market because they are the ones who actually make or break that offer. They are the ones who are going to give you the email if that's what you're going for. They are the ones who are going to give you the money if it's a product that you're selling. You know, They are the ones who are going to be taking action, whatever the action is, and spending time with your offer. They are the ones. So you always want to make sure that you're testing these different offers to see what the reaction is and uh, go for their opinion. Right. You always make your best guess, but then you get it and test it as soon as you possibly can. Now, some of the ways you can do this, right? So this, the idea is how can you eliminate some of these steps? How can you, uh, instead of testing for months and months and months to find the perfect offer, how can you get it so that the probabilities are, when you do create this offer, that it's good, right? Well, one way to do that is by blogging about whatever the specific offer is. So let's do uh, kind of a case study with us. So we, we go through and we say, okay, we want to create a uh, seriously simple analytics funnel. And for this funnel, we wanna target people who are new to analytics or have very limited experience with Google Analytics. So we're gonna write a bunch of blog posts and we're gonna do some DMTW episodes around Google Analytics and we're gonna see how they're received. Turns out they're received pretty well. Okay, so now we know there's a market there, right? So we've created content. It wasn't really offers at that particular example. It was just more just we were creating the content and on the blog to see if there was interest in those offers and then, yes okay are those those posts tend to get read more than other posts are being read so we know that there's an interest there so then we go okay well let's create a pdf of a guide to set google analytics goals right so we created that pdf and we advertise that on facebook really small test purchases just to get it in front of the market because again we think it's good right our probability our, our guess our probability is that yes we're going to be successful with this offer but who cares what we think it's the market that decides. So we've got to get in front of the market as fast as possible. And Facebook allows us a very inexpensive way of getting some eyeballs of our market in front of this offer and seeing. And it also allows us actually to test on two sides. So number one, we're testing the offer. But number two is we actually get to test the target. So we go and say, okay, well, let's talk to people who follow and like and are all interacting with the internet marketing gurus, right? People like Mike Filsame and Ryan Dice and Frank Kern and Chris Farrell and, and everybody are in that sort of area, right? So people that like the idols of internet marketing. And then let's talk about the, uh, let's do a different target and we're gonna target the people who have liked the Seriously Simple Marketing page. Okay, so that was another target. So let's do another target and another target would be people who use internet marketing tools like Infusionsoft or ClickBank right? Aweber. So people that are actively marketing, because why else would they be interacting with those tools unless they were actively marketing, right? And, and that's really what we want, because we want people who are actively marketing, because those are the people most likely to need analytics help. So we tested those three different markets. We found different responses, right, on those. In our case, the response so far, we're still finalizing some testing, but our responses so far have shown that the people who are interacting with internet marketing tools are more than likely uh, a better target. They're cheaper clicks, right? So it's a little cheaper to get them interested in this particular offer and then convert at a higher rate. Uh, so that was that's pretty interesting for us. So now that we've got that, we basically go, okay, well, good. Now we've got people opting in. We've got the opt-in rate. It's around 25% right now. We're testing so we can get it to at least 30. That would sort of be our goal. Uh, but our, our initial sort of like good enough goal is 20% for our funnel. Right, so if we get 20% of the people to opt in, then the funnel, you know, should be profitable based on that number. So we're we're already at 25. That's great. So we already have that set out. So now we want to try to push that higher because obviously the more people we get in the beginning of the funnel, the better everything else gets. But while we're doing that, so we're testing and doing that, we're building out additional offers. And now we've got this core offer, right? And so our core offer initially 
was a video series that was just focused on setting goals. And so the concept was, hey, we're going to do this PDF about how to do goals. And then when you download the PDF guide, it was a, it was a, uh, the initial offer was a seven dollar offer that said, hey, we've got this whole video series. So now you've got the guide and videos. Like how, how much better? That's, that's huge, right? So that didn't work. People were really interested. Now that could have not worked because of the way we pitched it, admittedly. But the other issue was it was a seven dollar product, and we didn't feel like we could charge more for that, even though we probably could. Uh, but we didn't want to charge more for that. Instead, what we decided to do is let, let's make a better offer. Let's try to do more value, and let's give them a thirty-seven dollar offer. But it covers all of analytics, right? And it's a good beginner's guide to Google Analytics. Now it won't get into super advanced kind of in the weeds stuff that some people will need, but not everybody needs those. Some people just want to understand where everything is, right? And that's really all they care about is where exactly is all this different stuff. And so we can set that up. So that's what we're doing now. And we're in the process of building that out. So shortly we should have uh, some data on that, but that's how we're telling. So it's like step at a time, step at a time, get it in front of the market. And that's how we can tell if it's gonna work or not. We're also looking at what, um, and this is some suggestions we would have for you too. You could look at what social media gets shared. Right, so if you are not sure if somebody's gonna be interested in your offer before you go ahead and spend all the time to create it, share some stuff about it, even if it's other people's stuff, on your Facebook pages, right? On, on your, promote some posts, send out some tweets, try to get an idea of what people are actually favoriting and retweeting and liking and sharing and commenting on. That will give you an idea of this engagement for the market if they're interested in that topic. And then of course you could be more than likely, you'd be more successful if you create your own offer around that. All right, so let's talk about the offer itself and four major parts when you're going through and you're explaining your offer. This is the sales page, the VSLs, any sort of that stuff. Now, this is not about copywriting, but I do wanna give you sort of a basic structure of what you wanna make sure that when you're talking about your offer that it covers. It's basically four, part, four parts here. Four is number, you know, what's it for? That's the biggest deal, right? What's it for? So this is what I have. I've got this PDF guide and it will help you for Google Analytics, right? So I help you set up goals in Google Analytics in this particular example. The under what it's for is also who it's for, right? This is perfect if you've, even if you've never opened up Google Analytics before, right? Or you've maybe got some basic experience with it, you know enough to kind of look at some stuff, but you really don't know how to set up goals. You know that it's possible and you really, you wanna work on setting up an opt-in and seeing how many leads you get each day or how many customers you get each day, but you're not quite sure how to do that. You just know it's possible. That's what this guide will show you how to do, right? So we've sort of targeted who it's for and what it does. Um, then, it, okay, what it is, it's an 11 page, it's a PDF, it's step-by-step -step, in that you're gonna cover this, 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 the four different types of goals and when and why you would use each one of them, right? Then we're gonna give you step-by-step -step examples of how to set those up. So you've got that what it is, why it works, right? Why does it work? Cause it's, it's a free service from Google Analytics. This guy's gonna walk you step-by-step -step so you can follow it at your own pace. You know, I'm there with questions. If you wanted to send us an email and ask some questions, we can help you out with that. So that's sort of the why, is, why it works. Why is this thing good? And then finally, how to purchase, right? So in our case, it's purchasing with an email. We had, a, you know, opting for an email. So it's like, okay, great. Click the, click the button below, download. You click download, it pops up. It says, great, where do you want me to send everything? Name an email, right? So that's the how to buy. What actions do we want to take? There are a lot of offers that people just have buy buttons and nobody actually ever says, please click the buy button, but you should do that. Because when you do that, you actually get a higher click-through rate in general. Obviously, you want to test it. We always say to test it. But in general, you will get a higher click-through rate. All right, so your offer in general, right? to summarize this whole thing up, your offer must be targeted, must be relevant to that target. It's got to be clear, easily to understand, and constantly evolving. So as an example, and going back to our goals, right? So we've got this goals PDF. We're already thinking about other PDFs because our core offer, which is this beginner's guide to Google Analytics, we could do another PDF that says, hey, here's how to track ads in Google Analytics, right? How you can track specific ads, how to tell where your traffic's coming from. We could do like a little mini PDF guide just on that, have people opt in for that, and that goes into our core offer. So that's a whole other way of evolving our offer and splittering off these different mini topics off of our main core topic to get people into that funnel. Again, constantly evolving, constantly testing. So what was your one idea for today? Was it the four puzzle pieces? Was it the types of offers? Was it how to create offers? Action brings results as always, right? So pick just one thing. If you're not quite sure, maybe you go through your, your offers you already have set up and you're like, oh, wow, you know what? I never really told them what exactly to do now. I never told them how to purchase it. I never gave them explicit instructions. Then go back and adjust your offer so it has that. Maybe you go through it and you go, you know what? I never really talked properly about how it does what it does or why this is a good thing, why it works, right? So think about that and maybe you go back and adjust your copy around that. Maybe you just have been thinking, okay, I don't really know what offers I should be putting on. In that case, go back to the offers list, take a look at all those and just pick one. Pick one and try it and test it. Or again, if you're just starting out, 
find somebody else who has offers already around it. Maybe it's a PDF or something like that. And even though you're sending traffic to somebody else's website, it's still something you can promote on Facebook if you wanted to. You can promote it on your Facebook page and send it as a promoter post, even though it's sending traffic to somebody else, just to see if people are interested in it. And if they are, now you know you've got a winner. It's sort of been validated, at least a little bit. There's no guarantee of success yet, but at least it's validated that yes, there's some interest there and you should maybe spend some time creating your own offer. So there's lots of different things you can do. Again, just pick one thing, try that, and then go on to the next. With that, we're gonna go ahead and bring it to a close. I know a fairly quick episode for today, but if you are listening to this pre-recorded on a podcast or watching us on YouTube, just go over to seriousofmarketing.com, join the notification list, and then you can hit the Insiders Club, which we're about to hit in just a moment. Uh, with that, I'll bring an official close, episode number 36, how to create a great offer. And we look forward to uh, chatting with you. Actually, it's going to be in a couple of weeks from this episode because next week I'm going to be at another conference called Conversion XL, which is all about conversions and split testing. So I'm going to geek out with uh, some of my peers, about 200 of my peers, uh, I believe, will be there. So that'll be kind of fun. And then the week after that, we will do uh, an episode. So again, not next week, but the week after. And I'll end up doing a recap of Conversion XL so we can share what we learned and hopefully uh, help you with some testing insights and, and what the latest and greatest things are in the world of testing and optimization. Uh, thanks again for joining, and we will talk to you in a couple of weeks.